Hi guys and welcome back to episode number two of Chessfield FC save. I haven't got a fancy name for this. If you've got any ideas for a series name, please do let me know down below. But as you can see, we've played three games since the first episode yesterday. And um, well, we're still unbeaten. We are still unbeaten. Our first game post livecom was Yo. Yeah, yeah, Yeovil, sorry. Uh, Dianga and Tyson scoring for us here before Warburton. A late consolation for Yeovil as we just take a look at the goals in the background. McCaw into Asante, found Tyson. Great crossing for Dianga who heads back across the goalkeeper. Finds that bottom corner for 1-0, 13 minutes into the game. Then Clark on this right-hand side into Evans and another good cross Tyson coming across his man and a second header there just before half time gave us a 2-0 lead Wavington then played in a ball in behind for Lakilo who pulled it across for Warburton who tapped in but it was too little too late in the end for Yeovil we then played Torquay away from home uh, sorry at home where Tom Denton scored the only goal of the game for us. He did come in off the bench in the second half and um, certainly had an impact here. You can see Whittle on this left-hand side. Took it down to the byline, stood up across, and Denton, the big lad that he is, gets in inside the six-yard box and flicks a header home for 1-0. And then we drew 0-0 against Hartlepool. You can see here we'll be drawn against AFC Russian and Diamonds in the FA Cup. League-wise, we're currently sat in third place with four points behind Notts County already. Uh, Wrexham and Hartlepool below us also have game in hand. It's early part of the season, you know, it's tight. Um, but we do have an FA Cup game, and this is what we are going with today. Why is everything in red? I have no idea. Okay, apparently people are... There we go. So what happened was I have changed the team and for some reason we had a graphical glitch there that wasn't wasn't uh, pulling it through properly. So what I've done is I've changed the team completely here for this game. Um, we are going to try and beat Russian Diamonds. Obviously, we want to have a decent cup run. But I thought this was a chance to, you know, get some players into the squad that don't normally play too much. Um, so we've got Smith in goal. Carline, Hollis, Gunning and Taylor at the back. Weston, Rowley, Butterfield and Buchanan in midfield with Denton and Scott Bowden up front for us. The full 11 changes from last time out in the league. That 0-0 draw with Hartlepool. This is also the first time all season we've had a full week between games. And we should be favourites here against the semi-pro outfit of Russian Diamonds. But it is Russian Diamonds that have the first highlight here we'll throw in. Burrell crosses, Smith claims, pretty easily. He then goes out wide to Weston, who has got a bit of space to run into here, and he is going to bring it forward. Heavy rain here, but he's tackled. Scully looks forward. Holly steps into Butfield. Now Rowley. Rowley and Denton are the two really that I'm looking for the biggest impact from in this game. As Rowley's ball forward is intercepted, but he doesn't find Weston on the second attempt. And Weston finds the back of the net for his first goal of the season. Three minutes into the game, and it is 1-0 already to the spy right. Weston and Rowley playing a little bit between them. Rowley probably is a bit lucky here that the ball came back to him, but then he fires it into Weston, who goes across the keeper. Probably a bit poor defending there. Not great goalkeeping for Rushland Diamonds. They really should have done a bit better with that, really. Carline now with the long throw in finds Bowden who knocks down for Buchanan in space again. It's just wide this time from Buchanan, and it looks like you know if we could get these shots off on the edge of the areas, we stand a chance of getting a few goals. But a volley into the box, flicked on towards the back post, and Fairlam levels it up. Ten minutes of the game has had a lot of action in this opening ten minutes, and that was a pretty well worked goal there for Russian and Diamonds. McCormack with a throw in, Harrell volleys it across, and Smith flicks the header on crucially. Fairlam beats Grant, uh, Grant Smith at his near post, which is um, a little bit annoying. 
really. We should be not get beaten on their post. Butterfield goes back to Gunning, who looks forward for Weston, brings it down across to Rowley, tries to chip one, and it's in the uncomfortable for the goalkeeper, really. He tried a little fancy chip. Hollis heads it to Rowley. Denton for Weston, who's having a good game, actually. Okay, it's Weston is. Forward for Denton. Can he find a cross here? It's blocked to Rowley. Weston now. He finds a cross towards the back post. It's brought down and Scott Bowden in the end finds the back of the net. I think he came off the defender and fell to Bowden, who makes no mistake there. Gives us the lead back 15 minutes into the game. It's Weston's cross and it was the defender. I don't know why he tried to take a touch, but it fell to Bowden, who did score in the end there for us. And now a throw in Carline. We've already seen he's dangerous with these long throws. Especially towards Denton, the target man. He brings it down on his chest and hits the pose there. Perhaps had options to square it, but I don't blame him at all for having an effort from there. Carline again now on this far side. He's throwing head of clear this time, but it's fallen back to him. Crossed in, and it's missed by Scully and Denton. Taps home with a back post for his second goal of the game. It's 3-1 to Chesterfield. We're 26 minutes into this game, and um, we're creating a lot. We are creating a lot of opportunities. I expected this against Russian and Diamonds. No disrespect to them, but we are a miles better team. And it's, that is incredibly poor defending from Scully. He tries to meet the ball, just completely misses the flight of it. And it's, it's a tap-in, really, in the end there for Denton. We've had 12 shots with 8 on target in this first half. Two expected goals already. Carline with the throw into Weston. Weston down the wing still. Tackle by Ford. Fairland, the scorer for Russian Diamonds, goes back to Ford. Dolman. Hollis goes forward. It's headed clear. And now Ford into Dolman. It's a poor ball forward, and Taylor easily picks that up. Gunning goes back to Taylor. Butterfield to Gunning. Looks forward for Denton, the target man, but it's cleared out. Now Fairlam can run at the defence, and he's skipped past Hollis easily, and he's fired one from about 20 yards out. He's gone just high and wide, but he's very dangerous. Very, very dangerous is Fairlam on that left-hand side. We go into half-time at 3-1 up. It's comfortable. We've looked very good, but Fairlam is is creating things. And if we keep giving him chances to run at us, we could be in a bit of trouble in this game. He could score a few goals. But time is ticking on in the second half. We've not quite had as exciting of a second half as we have the first half. 20 minutes ago, we're going to praise them. Taylor's ball forward is going to be picked up by Walton. In fact, he's going to play it straight downfield. Hollis... Looks for Buchanan, but Pharrell steps in. Smith flicks it on, and Fairlam is in behind again here. It's Fairlam. Ah, Smith saves this time. Another pretty decent chance for him there. Through Jonathan Smith is going to come on, as is Tom Whelan there. And let's bring on Alex Whittle at left back as well. So three changes made for us with... Just over 15 minutes to go, it's still 3-1, but Russian and Diamond's now looking to create something. And if we can pull a goal back, it could be near the end of this game. Parrish to Beltoxel. Across to Hallam. And it's quite nice to know that we forced them all the way back to the goalkeeper here. Walton looks forward. And we win the header, but he forced a forward. Hallam into Smith, a little flick from him again, and it's Fairlam, he's so dangerous, we know that. Smith into Fairlam, who continued his run, and it's another decent save from Grant Smith there to deny Fairlam once again. It is a corner for Russian and Diamonds. Hollis heads clear, Bowden now brings it down, and he has got a bit of space to run into, but he doesn't quite have the pace. Especially not against Fairlam, who was back defender, who clears it out for a throw-in. Corner, call line to deliver. Hollis heads over. And I think we should be secure now. 
with eight minutes to go, we have a two goal advantage. We have the ball here. Carline's throw in. Denton again gets there first. It's cleared out to Weston. Headed back in. Smith to Carline. Back to Smith. Carline made that run down the right hand side, but Smith comes central instead. Can we make it four here? Carline into Jonathan Smith. Working it well here. Cross comes in towards Buchanan at the back post and he's offside. And to be honest with you, there's no excuse for him to be offside there at all. We're just watching down this bottom corner and he just doesn't come back in with the rest of the team. And it's quite clearly offside in the end. But we should be enough to see us through to the first round proper of the FA Cup here. Final minute of the game. And that is full time. Fair play to Russian Diamonds. They played very, very well in that game. Um, but I think the quality in our team shone through there for us. We do win in the fourth qualifying round. We gain nearly 10k for that. And we will be back in a couple of days for that first round draw. And then Solihull Moors as well in the league. Okay, so we return with FA Cup first round draw. There's 80 teams to be drawn here. This, of course, was the minimum expectation for us. Our affiliate club, Maclock, are still in here. They've just been drawn away to MK Dons. That's a big, big tie for them there. We do also have a brand new senior affiliate in Huddersfield Town as well. I asked the board for one to just help us with a bit of money and potential players. We had the choice between Huddersfield and Barnsley. I went for Huddersfield. Um, in terms of players from both teams, neither of them were standout for people that we could bring in on loan. Um, so Huddersfield paid them more money, so that's why I chose them. If I just quickly move my camera down so we can see more of the draw behind me. And um, do we have any standout ties at the moment? Ipswich versus Portsmouth is a big, big clash at this stage of the FA Cup. I don't know who I want, particularly in this game. Or in this round, I would quite like a, a lower ranked team so we can rotate again and, you know, maybe get through to the next round. Obviously, the third round is the big dream to get one of the big boys. That would be very, very nice. We have 46 teams left to draw now. And we are still in there. There's still some interesting names there. Bolton, I can see straight away down. But we have just been drawn at home against Cambridge of the division above us. So that's an interesting one. How have Cambridge started the season? They are da, 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 just outside the playoffs, the level. One of many teams on 13 points, but zero goal difference. We will be at home on the 7th of November. When is that? It's a couple of games time. So hopefully... We can beat them and uh, qualify, yeah. So that's a, an interesting tie. We do have one day left to play before we have Solihull Moors. So I'll come back at the start of that game for you. So the game against Solihull Moors is here. And we've gone back to that regular starting 11 that we've seen in the first couple of games in that first episode. Watkins returns in goal with Yarny, Evans, Maguire and Preston at the back. Turning on right wing, Tyson on the left wing with McCourt and Clark in the centre of midfield. Asante and Dianga uh, start up. Top four is here against Solihull Moors. George Carline has come onto the bench. I was very, very impressed with him last time. Um, so he comes in to the, the bench. Um, I was considering starting Denton in this game, but he's, he's not fit. So I, I couldn't start him unfortunately he had to remain on the bench but he's had a decent start to the season and the anger has been playing pretty uh, not the anger sorry asante has been playing pretty poor recently in fact to be fair the anger has as well so i don't know why i'm trying to defend him there is a chance that denton could get some game time going forward um, which is interesting because he started off on the transfer list for us. I have since removed him from that. I think he could be an asset for the rest of this season as we come towards half-time in this game against Solihull Moors with very little action, he says, as there's a highlight, say, free kick in the defensive territory for Solihull Moors. Chips it forward. Archer to Sabara. 
Archer's continued his run. McCourt tackles and it's going to go through to Watkins here. A couple of defenders come short. He goes to Maguire and gives it back to him. He now plays downfield for Tyson. It's a decent ball. Asante comes back to McCourt to Clark. What is ahead of him? He plays an outside of the foot pass to Tyson. He gets past his man into the box. Tyson straight to the keeper in the end. But it was decent movement from Tyson. It's a good ball out there from McCourt as well. But we do go into half time at 0 0. We haven't particularly seen too much. But I'm going to go and encourage the team. We have been the better team. I'm going to move to an attacking style as well. But we will see how long we go before you know we have to think about making subs because something isn't quite working here. We have throwing here Yarny to Clark in our defensive third. Finds McCourt. Goes back to Evans. Yarny. And Evans looks forward, but it's not a great ball forward. Sabara to Archer. Out to Adam Rooney. Tackle by Preston. That's a great tackle from Preston. Dianga finds Asante. And there's a counter-attack on here. He's into the box. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He takes his time. And the defender manages to get back and block his shot out for a corner. But that was a great tackle from Preston. And a decent move forward. Asante just didn't quite have the pace. Corner comes in. Evans heads straight at the keeper who quickly releases downfield but that is the end of that highlight there uh i feel like dianga hasn't quite i really want to bring denton on but he's, he's just not fit i can't afford to bring denton on uh, mcguire on that book in i'm going to take him off for gunning and mccourt can come off for car line i really want to bring denton on but he's just not fit enough at the moment Gunnings over the free kick finds Asante, he gets his head on, he's off the bar, he was offside anyway, somehow that did not go in, and 20 minutes to go, now Denton is going to come on for the anger, we're going to stick him on that target man again, as the ball comes forwards, Cranston in a bit of space, tries to cross one and he's blocked out for a corner kick, Denton now on the pitch, and do you know what? Let's distribute it to a target man. We're going to just go long ball. Let's demand more from them. We're going to try and hit Tom Denton. Use his height here. We've dominated the game, but it's nil-nil. This, of course, would keep that unbeaten run going. I'm going to berate them. Let's do it. Let's break them. See if we can find something late on. We've got five other minutes. Can we get one last highlight? It's been a pretty poor game. Carline with a throw in. Goes to Gunning. Gets it back. Space. Can he find a cross? He can towards Denton. And Denton's won it. 91st minute. 92nd minute of the game. And Tom Denton gets his foot on it. It's not quite the style that I'd hoped from him. That I brought him on for. But it was just short throwing. Everyone was expecting that long one. Gunning gave it back to Carline, and by the time the defenders got out, it's a great cross, and Denton just peels away from his man and finds the bottom corner with that controlled volley. Is that going to be enough? I should be. We're into the final minute of the game. And that is why I brought Denton on. He scores goals. It's a very good win for us there. Very, very good win, and I'm incredibly pleased that we've managed to see that out because Solihull Moors gave us a tough game there. But we have won. Denton is very, very tired. But it keeps us second in the league as things stand here. Once, you know, I can actually get to the league. Thank you. And Notts County, two points ahead of us. Wrexham still just behind us with game in hand. Same as Eastley and Hartlepool as well. So there's games all over the place at the moment. Um, In terms of where we'll be back next episode... I think we'll come back for Cambridge. We'll see how that goes and when the second round will be, if we qualify. Um, and then we'll take it from there. I don't want to keep coming back every other game, so I do want to try and obviously not take ages on the season. But it's the FA Cup first round. We'll do Cambridge. If we go out, we'll play a few games off camera and we'll come back for Notts County. If we go through, we'll see when the second round is. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell for more. Until next time, stay safe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.